Hey everyone, I'm Pete. This is the assembly guide for the new flashlight soldering kit. This is a great little guy for beginners. You can learn how to solder with this pretty easily. It's your classic battery resistor LED switch circuit. So um, with just these four components, you can get going and learn how to solder. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over all the parts included in the kit and some of the tools necessary to, to build it. And we're also gonna talk about some general soldering tips on how to, how to do good soldering. So let's jump right in. So here we've got all the parts laid out on a mat for you to check out. Uh, first thing is the battery. Uh, this is a CR2032 three volt little coin cell. And those are pretty handy. You can actually get those at the grocery store. So if you ever need to replace this, that's pretty nice. Next, we've got the LED right here. Probably the most important uh, ingredient to this kit. It provides the light, obviously, um, and that is a white LED. If you wanted to do a mod on this or something, you could choose a different color, but the kit comes with a bright white um, five millimeter LED. Uh, next, we have the battery connector. Um, this right here is where the CR2032 is gonna fit in, and it just has two solder joints on the bottom side that we will put into the PCB. Next is the slide switch. Um, this is a single pole dual throw. So that means it has a single pole in the middle, and then depending on where you put the slide switch, it's gonna connect that single pole to either the left one or the right one. And that's how we're gonna turn the LED on and off. Uh, next, we have the resistor. This is a 10 ohm resistor, and uh, that's actually a pretty small amount of resistance, but that allows us to get a pretty darn bright flashlight out of this kit, which is fun. Um, and if you wanna learn about the bands on this, um, you can hit up one of our resistor tutorials and learn what those colors mean. But the combination of colors on this guy right there actually mean 10 ohms and then a um, percentage of accuracy that it has tolerance. That's the word I'm looking for. And last, we have the PCB here. This is what we actually designed in-house here at SparkFun and um, is also included in the kit. That's where all the parts are gonna get soldered into. All right, so taking a closer look at the PCB, um, you can see where all the parts go in. Uh, we've got our resistor, LED, switch, and battery. Um, and there's some nice outlines on the silk here to help you know where the parts go. So we built in some tricks into the design to help prevent mistakes when you're a first time solderer. And when you're assembling this kit, we wanna make sure uh, that you get all the parts in correct and get them in on the right side. Uh, so if you look closely at the pins on all of these footprints, there's actually the red mask over them and there's no exposed metal. But if we look at the back side of this, flip this over, now you can see these little metal rings right there. Those are called annular rings and they allow the solder to connect to that plated through hole pad. And that's actually where our electrical connection is gonna happen. Um, and so what we've done is we've only exposed it on this bottom side so that you kind of have to put the part in on the correct side. You could build this thing with all the parts on the wrong side and it would probably still function, but it wouldn't fit as ergonomically in your hand or function as it was intended to. Um, so yeah, we've covered up the annular rings on the top side so that you push the parts down in here and then you solder on this side. Uh, another thing you may have noticed just there is that we actually put the circuit into the silk on the, on the PCB here. So at a glance, looking at the product, um, you can see that we've got a battery on these two terminals down here, and then it's gonna go through a resistor right here, and then this is where our uh, LED is, and then it hits this switch here. And these are the schematic symbols for what those look like in the traditional engineering schematic. Um, you can also look at those in the schematic file on the product page. There's a PDF of the actual Eagle schematic to look at. Uh, we've also put some silk here labeling what these things are here to, again, help get those right parts in the right position. Um, one more thing I'd like to mention, I guess, is um, the LED does not go flush right there. So we put a little piece of text right here that says, fold LED over. So we're really hoping that everyone will read that. And then when, they're, when they have the finished product, they're going to put the LED in, not all the way flush but actually sitting a little bit above the PCB, and then you're gonna fold that LED over so that it faces forward and acts more like a normal flashlight. Uh, lastly, there's a little uh, box right here to write your name. So when you're done soldering, you can say, you know, this flashlight belongs to Pete. 
All right, so let's talk about tools. Um, first up, I have this handy mat right here. Uh, these are available at sparkfun.com. They're nice because they're smooth like this and they hold your parts from rolling around. There's some handy little things on the top too where we can place parts when we're lining them up, getting ready to solder. Uh, next up, we've got solder. This is a water soluble flux solder, which is key because it's much easier to clean. Um, and you can actually use some alcohol on that with a Kim wipe or you can dunk it in some water and actually scrub it and then dry it off. Um, but we use this in production here at SparkFun, so same stuff we're using. There's the thin core and the thicker core. I actually prefer the thicker core because you don't quite have to feed as much in when you're doing each solder joint. Um, and for PTH stuff like this kit, it's, uh, it's really better to use the thick stuff. Uh, next up, I've got some clippers here. These are our new ones, uh, extra sharp, really nice clippers. We're gonna use those to snip all the leads, the excess leads, once we're done putting the parts through the PZB, soldering it in place, then we're gonna snip them all off. Um, tweezers are not totally necessary for this assembly guide. I'm gonna use those mostly to point at things while we're soldering, but you could use them to handle your small components if needed. Uh, and then last right here, I have some safety glasses. So these ones are pretty sweet. They have the little geek logo right there. And so I'll be wearing these while soldering. Um, I'm, I've been doing this for many years, so I'm not too worried about the solder flying in my eyes. But still, when I clean my tip in that sponge, that's usually the most risky time. And the solder could catch like a piece of that sponge and fly up. So I'm always wearing these around SparkFun and I encourage you to too. Um, we've got the new Weller soldering iron right here that we sell. Um, it is set to 710 right now, so it's pretty darn hot. Don't want to be touching that tip with your fingers. All right, and then we have a uh, copper sponge right here. We also have this at sparkfun.com, pretty good stuff. Um, and this is where we're gonna actually continually clean this tip. And so after every solder joint, I usually come over here and hit this a little bit and scrub off all the oxidized solder that's on the tip there. Um, and then I also have this fan right here that's gonna be, uh, we just call them kind of solder sucker fans around here. Um, and so that's going to help bring some of the fumes out and it's got a little coal filter right there. There's a whole gamut of those kinds of uh, fans on, on, on the web available so you might have to do a little searching for that. But I do believe Weller makes this one as well. So we're selling a lot of Weller stuff these days and they make good things. So let's dive into some actual soldering. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about some soldering tips on how to get a good solder joint. Uh, I have an extremely large soldering iron here. And this is good for showing the tip and where the hottest point is. So oftentimes when you're first learning to solder, there might be some black oxidized solder on there. What we can do is rub that in the copper sponge and get it nice and clean. So then it'll look more like this. It's supposed to be totally silver, but the spray paint is wearing off a little bit. Um, yeah, and so the most common mistake is that you think the very tip is the hottest part of the soldering iron. And what we actually wanna do is touch the solder right here, a little bit down from the tip. And we're gonna to touch the circuit board and the leg of the component and feed in the solder right there. Next up is what an actual good solder joint looks like. This extremely large Hershey's Kiss is a pretty good example. Um, so if you can imagine a circuit board below this, and then the leg of the LED coming up through here. This is what we want our solder joint to look like. So it has a nice fillet, that's what it's called. It's kind of like a skateboard ramp angle right there. Um, and we want to fill it up all the way around it so that the solder fills into that pad in the circuit board and also all the way around the leg. All right, now let's build this thing. Um, first thing is the resistor. There's actually an order of operations that makes this easiest to assemble. And so in our hookup guide and in this video, I'm gonna follow a certain order that I put each component into the circuit board and that allows for easiest assembly. So um, what you do is you actually choose the component with the least height and that way we can flip the board over, solder that in place, get the next one. And that way nothing's falling out of the circuit board when I have it upside down. So the first component is the resistor. And what I'm gonna do is pull these tabs off the end and then make this into a U shape and so that way it will push into the circuit board a little more easily. We'll push it into the circuit board and then let's make our first solder joint. Um, what I'm gonna do is take the soldering iron and remember it's not the very tip of the soldering iron, it's just a little bit back from it. I'm gonna place that so that it's touching the annular ring of the circuit board and the leg of the component. 
and I'm gonna let that heat up for one, two seconds. And then I'm gonna feed the solder into that joint. It's gonna start to melt and smoke a little. And then I'm gonna make sure the solder flows all the way around that leg and fills that hole. We're gonna do the same thing to the next leg here. And there we have it, it's soldered in place. At this point, we can actually snip the leads off with uh, snippers. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip one, snip the other. There we go. And our resistor is in place, looking good. Next component is the slide switch. And this component is actually not polarized. The resistor was not polarized either. That could go in either way. So this one can fit in this way or it can fit in this way. And it's still gonna work. Um, depending on the way that, where that switch is set is gonna turn this thing on or off. So same idea here. We wanna make sure it's pushed all the way through the PCB. And then I'm gonna to touch each annular ring with the iron, feed in some solder, get that nice and clean. And then again, I can snip these leads too. Um, okay, next up is the battery connector. This is polarized and so it actually has just two legs on it and it can be spun around either way, but you could put this in incorrectly. So pay attention to the marking on the circuit board. There's a round circle with a plus and a minus, and there's also a little section that's um, kind of a rectangle coming off of the circle. So we wanna make sure to align that properly. Flip it over. Again, we're just gonna hit that annular ring and leg, feed in some solder, looking good. Okay, now my battery's in place. And then now the last component to solder in place is the LED. And this one, again, is polarized. So that means that you have to put it in the right way. If we accidentally put it in the wrong way, then this isn't gonna work. If you look closely at this LED, you can see that one leg is short and one leg is long. And the short leg is the minus side of the LED and the long leg is the plus side of the LED. We've got that marked on the PCB itself. So you can see that there. The other important thing to note about the LED is that we're not gonna put it flush to the PCB. We actually want to have it sit about, I don't know, a quarter inch, half inch off the PCB, and then we're going to fold it forward so that the LED illuminates forward when you're holding this flashlight. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold it over now so that um, it's in place the way I want it and I can solder it into place. Flip it over and touch these solder joints into place. And there we have it. I'm going to snip these leads. And that's actually all the soldering we need to do for this. Let's go ahead and pop a battery in this thing and see if it works. All right, so the moment of truth. Finish soldering, you put the battery in, it clips in just like that. Oh, there is a plus side on this battery, so you gotta watch out for that. I want the plus going up. And here we go, let's do the slide switch. Oh yeah, victory. Ah, nothing like a good LED, huh? So you don't wanna look directly at this thing. It is really bright. Um, yeah, so that's the, uh, the new Basics uh, flashlight soldering kit. And I recommend trying it out, even if you're an experienced solderer. It's pretty fun to have a little uh, sort of knickknack swag style flashlight. I actually built this up with my three-year-old son last night and we had a blast. You know, it took us about a half an hour to do all nine solder joints, but we got through it and he got to learn about resistors and LEDs and now he has his own flashlight that he made. So uh, we'll be using that camping for sure. Um, so yeah, I recommend checking this out. If you'd like a more step-by-step -step guide um, that's written rather than this video, I recommend checking out the hookup guide because that uh, lays out each solder joint and each part in a more line-by-line -line sort of fashion. Um, so check this out at sparkfun.com. Um, I recommend you know getting some new friends into soldering or maybe if you have little young ones in your family, you get them interested. Um, and then the next step is there's a whole gamut of soldering kits we have. We have the Simon Says one, which is pretty fun. That's probably like 30 solder joints. Um, there's the Binary Blaster. There's also some Day of the Dead, Day of the Geek style um, skull PCBs with blinking LEDs that are pretty fun. So I recommend checking out all those kits. Um, you can hit those up in the kits category at sparkfun.com. Thanks for watching and happy soldering.